Jamal Hill won the UFC light heavyweight title as he defeated Glover Teixeira by unanimous decision. Additionally, Hill is the first DWCS alum to win a title. What was your reaction to the title fight, which served as the night's main event? And how long do you think Hill could possibly reign atop the 205 mountain? Also, I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys. Who do you think will be the next DWCS alum to capture gold? Turning to the MMA media titan for the first take, Mike. Yeah, so I guess uh, we'll start from the beginning there of those questions. Uh, great performance from Jamal Hill there. I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? Like six weeks ago or so, this guy isn't even included in the title conversation for this weight class right now. We're looking at, you know, crowning a vacant champion uh, in there in Vegas. And we don't get, you know, the, the decision there. We get a draw and it leads to this and he takes advantage of the moment. So, like, great for Jamal Hill. I mean, what can you say about the performance? The guy absolutely beat the ever-loving hell out of Glover to share in there. Like, he almost felt bad for the beating Glover was taking, but also in awe of his toughness and the fact that he was able to uh, take all that from Jamal. And, you know, Jamal going in there and not getting deterred and continuing to batter him. I mean, all just really promising signs, especially for him going five rounds, you know, in a situation like that, hostile territory. I mean, just a lot of positive things to say about Jamal Hill coming out of this. Uh, took advantage of the moment, so props to him for that uh, as far as how long he can reign on top of this division like man i really have no idea like we we're doing at the start of this year predictions who's going to be the light heavyweight champion by the end of 2023 like i don't know could be three or four guys and i still believe it could be three or four guys especially because we just don't know jamal hills like the depth of his talent still i think we learned a lot about him in this fight but this is the first top five guy he's ever fought. He hasn't fought the other guys occupying the top of this division right now. So I don't know exactly how he's going to fare against all of them. And all respect to Glover Teixeira for being who he is. But uh, he's obviously 43 years old. Who knows how much that fight against Yuri Prohoshka took out of him. Like, we don't know exactly the version of Glover we're getting in this fight. So it makes it a little bit difficult to assess. But nevertheless, all good things to say about Jamal Hill. And as far as your last question there, who could be the final or next Dana White Contender Series alumni to win a belt? My pick is Sean O'Malley, just because he seems to be uh, in closest proximity at this point. His next fight, all indications, probably an interim bantamweight title fight, an undisputed bantamweight title fight. It's going to be one of those two, just depending on how the title picture in that weight class shakes out. But he is right there. So he is my choice just based on uh, kind of common sense and how the landscape is in these divisions right now. The transformation of O'Malley right there. I forgot. I thought Chase Hooper was on until I sorted <laughs> out the tattoos, but good stuff from Mike. All right. Next up here is Nolan King. Uh, can you remember I'm all Nolan? Uh, yeah, not, you know. let's do it. I got a good memory. Uh, my reaction personally, I was shocked. I'm not necessarily at the outcome at the result. I thought that fight going into it could have gone either way. Right. I think we knew what we were getting into. Um, it could have been anybody's fight, but it's the way that Jamal Hill won that really surprised me. I mean, he showed some stuff that I had in any scenario ruled out. You know, I thought his his clinch game, his takedown defense from the start. I mean, he shut down Glover's takedown attempts, especially in those opening minutes, which I think was a huge confidence boost um, for him to be able to go out there. You know, when when the fight did hit the mat to stay composed, do the right things and get up to his feet. I think that's a tremendous amount of improvement that we saw um from jamal hill in between fights uh you know i think you don't usually see that it's usually something that accumulates over somebody gaining experience and maybe they get by with some of their skills while they take the bigger fights and then they hit that stride of improvement but he's there i think it's kind of scary to to think about what his uh potential is now i mean this division is is uh in a weird spot you know i think if you if you ask me it's about him versus yuri or him versus magomed ankalaev head to head who would win I'd maybe lean towards the title challengers at this point but with just that big stride that he took in going into this fight I'm sure uh you know talking to his team afterwards Anthony Smith was a big part of that um obviously they, they credited him a lot with the improvement also uh using a dietitian for the first time um you know if, if you take all that into account I think it's scary though to think about how much better he can get if he continues at this clip um I understand some of the criticism uh you know some people saying he's still not the sharpest or he fought Glover who was older um, but I mean, hey, this is the light heavyweight division. Has anybody been following along recently? Like there's this isn't, you know, the, the best point fighting, most technical, you know, everybody's on top of their A game. Like sometimes uh, the best fighters are the, the, the ones that are the champions um, get in some, kind of these sloppy wars like we saw with Yuri versus Glover. So um, I think maybe, uh, you know, people are, are I think Jamal's getting his due. But at the same time, there's kind of this this. Well, you know, the division's in a weird spot and there might be better fighters out there. But 
the stride he took, I mean, it's who am I to doubt him? I think we're going to see, uh, see a continued improvement from him. It's just a matter of how good he can get, how quick. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, he definitely, I, I thought he might need some possible seasoning uh, at one point, but you know, like the, what the Smiths fight would bring. Um, but he proved me wrong. He was ready for Glover and he took on some of Glover's best offense, offensive weapons, the wrestling, the jujitsu got mounted, uh, go ahead, Nolan. You want to chime in? Some yeah, more? well, I was going to say, you know, you asked me if I'd remember all those questions, and then I forgot the big one, which is who's the next Dana White's Contender Series uh, fighter who I think is going to be a champion. And this isn't a knock on some of the guys that are contenders now. I, it's really tough, obviously, with timing and matchups and the way the division is. But I think Bo Nickel actually, you Ooh. know, might be one of the guys that gets it next. I mean, we think about this show has been around for six seasons, and they just had their first champion so it's it's not an easy thing to do but i think bo will have a fast track kind of similar to like we saw with alex Pereira. the thing is though i think that his skills right now in that division match up very well against a lot of the contenders i mean obviously he's a great wrestler he's going to match up great with everyone but when you have guys that are uh you know pretty solid kickboxers at the top of the division i think that that it bodes well for him if they do give him that fast track all right let's turn it over to goes goes let me know if you need uh me to help you out with the questions i know i threw a lot at you guys well i mean to start off jamal hill he looked incredible i i thought his fight iq was very impressive his toughness even his technique um he improves from fight to fight and that's what i like about him and i feel like if he had that anthony smith fight he would have probably improved more and would have been uh, a, a better fighter fighting for the title but things didn't work out that way and at the end of the day he was still able to capture the belt with the knowledge that he has now now, there were situations where, if you look at it, yes, it's one-sided, right, the scorecard. But Glover did have his moments, right? And he was able to fight through that, and I thought that's what was so important. There were some takedown attempts, and there were there were times where he got deep on there. And if you look at the division, maybe a really good wrestler could give Jamal problems right now. But like I said, he improves from fight to fight, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to say where what the limits are for this kid, but I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to keep improving. I think he's going to maybe hold on to this belt at least for another year. I think um, about, I want to say two years ago, I made a list of 15 fighters that I thought would be pretty impressive coming up. He was number one. Number two was Adrian Yanez. So he's going to be my pick for Dana White's Contender Series. But something is key in this equation. A lot of those guys need to pick each other off. I think Adrian, much like Jamal Hill, is improving. And I think if a couple of those guys pick each other off at the top, same same deal. Uh, he could find himself maybe by the end of the year, start of next year in a spot where maybe he could write. Yeah.